Yeah. 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 For our prepared speeches tonight, we have a full range of speakers on tonight's agenda. We've got CTM number two by Tara. She was here. Go. <laughs> and also uh, CTM number 10 by Ethan. So big milestone for Ethan. So I can only hope to get to that. But our first speech is Bo Safekin. He will be doing CTM number four called Operation Backdoor China. Bo has been a member of Golden Gate Toastmasters since August 07 and has participated in all roles. It's impressive that he's at uh, speech number four. During the day, Bo is fixing common sense problems in an uncommon manner. You can tell he emailed this to me. <laughs> For fun, Bo, Bo enjoys meeting new friends, mixing new drinks, and cooking something wonderful. Evaluating Bo tonight will be Will Richardson, who will talk about the manual objectives. Thank you, Deborah. Tonight, Bo will be focusing on how to say it. His objectives are to select the right words and sentence structure to communicate ideas clearly, accurately, and vividly. He will use rhetorical devices to enhance and emphasize ideas, eliminate jargon and un unnecessary words, and use correct grammar. Time is five to seven minutes. So Bo's personal goals are to slow down, increase audience interaction, and not move as much. Bo Safekin, Operation Backdoor China, Operation Backdoor China, Bo Safekin. Oh. Now, I've been presented with a number of questions over the last couple of months. Last to last, what do you wish to do in the next 10 years, Bo? Five years, two years, one year, why would you want to be a member of this company? And every single time I had to answer this question, I always had to think, well, hopefully not having to talk to you in five to 10 years. <laughs> Which led me to the idea of, where am I and what do I want to do? I, I'm 25 years old in a city of opportunity. However, it seems that there are some things that I'm seeing that may make that a little difficult. And I'm kind of wondering if I'm playing in the right game. So what I did is an analysis. Where in the world right now could I be most useful given the fact that I have no specific training outside of accounting and finance? I don't want to go for any certificates and I don't care about being a CPA ever in my life. One thing that I have been doing the last 25 years is speaking English. Okay, I can do that. Nice. nice. <laughs> How can I benefit from that? How can I take my financial knowledge and my ability to speak English simply to a, to a country that would welcome me with open arms? And that, my friends, is China. So my speech tonight is why I believe America is not my land of opportunity and why I believe I have to go across the city to China in order to find it. Let's do a quick breakdown. The United States right now has a labor surplus in this area of people that could do my specific job and have five to ten years experience and will take the same pay because they have someone else supporting them, Otherwise, meaning they're either married or have some form of income to supplement what would actually be the income I would need to survive. There's also in America a negative savings rate which allows fewer people to spend more, more of the time. Granted, we're still running on credit and we have infinite lines, but when you're trying to find your place in the world, I'm, I'm trying to be giving financial advice or helping people that don't even know how to save a dollar. So to me, that seemed kind of like a problem. However, you go across the ocean to China. The savings rate in China is about 40%, regardless, across the, across the board. They believe in cash versus credit. and Right now, in China, the opportunity for speaking English, there's 600 million people trying to learn English right now. It's twice as many as that live in the United States. So from a market perspective, China is a literal gold pot just waiting for someone to come in there to give them a way of speaking that's both simple and efficient as well as cost effective. And gratefully, I don't have to do the last part. They pay good money and they have good people. So. Why do it? Why do it? I was here, I finally met people, I've met a great club, I'm getting a network together, but why make the shift to China? I'm 25. I have so many years of my life to do it. But I believe that I could come back, and that's why I'm using Operation Backdoor China to make it happen. I believe that I can spend time in China to develop 
not only just a better perspective of what the world is like outside the United States, but also find out what other people in the world wish to have and wish to know, and then leverage that knowledge here. Because right now, I believe in this time in America, that we don't have enough people that are willing to make a huge shift to go outside of what they're already doing. In my experience, <coughs> since I've been here, it has been people that have been dying for security rather than dying for freedom. We want to have the same crap that our grandfathers and our fathers and our great-grandfathers had back in when they were young. But I don't want that. I cannot believe that I am trying to fight and win and do what I want to do in America when everyone just wants to be normal, average, great, not, not spectacular. I want to be among people that the reason that they have to learn the skill or language is because it has a direct effect on their ability to live. Teaching English in China, you're teaching people that are spending literally 10 months out of the year's amount of money to learn English. These people are extremely motivated, very well educated, and will be able to pick up and learn things that I, I could never do. But because I have the ability to teach, I'm both patient and can take complex ideas down to a smaller level, even here in the States when it comes to financial stuff. So rather than boring people with large, drawn-out financial analyses, I simply can give them a two-second analysis of what's happening. Whereas out there, they appreciate and love that. Here, they don't like it because it doesn't sound professional. So back to Operation China is simply my method for how I'm going to succeed. I'm going to be going there within the next three months. That's my goal, is to be out of America in three months and there, teaching and growing a network. Right now I have a network of people out there that I've been developing over the last two years. I've been teaching English on the side to people in China, Taiwan, Singapore, Thailand, and Japan, and Malaysia at night. When, I'm, when everyone's normally asleep, I can't go to sleep. That's what I've been doing. And the idea that China is so inviting of a place for someone that wants to go there and actually help people and to really grow and help to better themselves and those around them, that seems to me to be where I go. I have to be. Being the accountant that you all know me as, I'm not very good at accounting, and nor do I particularly wish to ever be, because I'm better at teaching. So Operation Backdoor China will be all about how will I make my shift to not only better the future of the people that I know here in the States, but my own future as well. So by going there, I will not only be helping people that really could use it, I'll be increasing my skill and helping to build a future based off progress, ambition, perseverance, and not security. Thank you.